Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here or just passing through, please consider subscribing to Glenda Sully. Just hit that little subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so when I upload a new video, you'll be notified. And I want to welcome all of my new subscribers. You will be loved and accepted here. Uh, we don't discriminate. We don't uh, judge. We just have fun. And um, I'm going to try to get back to telling my stories from my childhood. I kind of got away from that because I had so much um, current day life interfering. I kind of got away from my storytelling. But I think I can dredge up some more stories from when um, I was a little girl. So I will be adding to my collection of stories. And I hope that you enjoy them. You know, storytelling from the years gone by is kind of a lost art. And um, it's been my pleasure to try to revive a little bit of that lost story. And I think that y'all have enjoyed listening to my stories. And I know that many of you can relate to some of the things that I tell my stories about from my childhood, especially if you grew up in the South like I did. Uh, I was born and raised in a little country town called Lumberton, Mississippi. Um, during the time that I was growing up there, it was a lumber mill town. Uh, obviously, that's where it got its name from. There were a lot of pines in that area, good old southern pines, um, and they still are today. But because of that and all of the virgin forest and so much um, pines that were available for cutting down and making lumber and you know after the war there was a huge demand for lumber because there were so many homes being built with so many men coming back from the war and starting their families and settling in that area. Although Lumberton was a small town and it still is. When I was growing up there in the 50s and 60s uh, the population was only about 2,000 and for some reason, it has never grown past 2,000. Um, I'm sure that's because a lot of people who live there still own the land that belonged to their parents and their grandparents, and they don't want to let go of that land. So it has not expanded very much. So let me get my water and take a big old uh, slug of it. Y'all know I love ice water. I drink it all day long. So I just reuse these big old water bottles. I freeze them, get me a big old chunk of ice in there, and I have nice cold ice water all day. And um, Jill's refrigerator has a filter in it. So whenever I fill up my bottle, the water is filtered. And I love it. I don't like to have the taste of tap water with the, the um, chlorine in it. So today I just want to go back and reminisce a little bit about uh, when I was growing up there in what we called Hargrove Hill because our house did set up on a little hill. And if you go back to my playlist of um, stories of when I was growing up, I do have a video of um, whenever I went back by the house there on Highway 13 outside of Lumberton and, and you'll see that it does set up on a little hill. But, um, oh, before I get into that, I want to show y'all my lipstick. Uh, this is the L'Oreal number 254. It's called Everbloom. And I've got to get into my Amazon store and order another two because it's almost gone. But mm. It is a beautiful color, and I will leave the link for it in the description box below if you want to order your tube. I think they're about $5.99, and it does match my top that I got from Chico's a few weeks ago. I love this top. This is um, called the Dragonfly Tea, and it did come from um, Chico's Off the Rack. And I think now they're having a 4th of July sale. I'm not sure if this particular tea is $10, but I did get an email from them saying that they have teas that are $10 now. And then my eyeshadow is by Rimmel, and it's called the Wow Edition. And I used, um, I used the white kind of in the corner of my eye. I don't know why. <laughs> I just like the way it looks right there. 
And then I use this um, coral color here. And I usually start right in the center. And then I just kind of go, give it a little bit of lift there on the corner. I love playing with makeup. It's so much fun. It reminds me of being a young teenage girl there in Lumberton. And I will also leave the link for the Rimmel eyeshadow. And if you purchase something using my link, then I will receive a small commission from Amazon. And I will be so grateful for that. You know, every little bit helps, especially when you live on Social Security. So, um, I was just thinking about how we used to dispose of the trash when, um, you know, when it was time to take out the garbage. And uh, my mother, Dort, she would always save the um, the paper bags, you know, from the grocery store. And she would keep a paper bag. Usually she would double it because sometimes we would put things in there that would be a little liquidy and uh, she didn't want that dripping through and getting on the cabinet, inside the cabinet underneath the sink. Uh, that's where Dorothy usually kept her garbage. So she would double her paper bags and we would put all of the trash in there. Now, there would be a slop bucket underneath the sink also, and that was for the hogs. We would keep all the food scraps and, you know, eggshells and things like that in the slop bucket so that we could slop the hogs with that. And um, it would be table scraps and, you know, just whatever the pigs would eat, which y'all know a pig is a pig is going to eat about just about anything, but then the regular trash, we would have to take it outside and burn it. And you know, back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, um, they had these old burn barrels, which are 55 gallon barrels that are converted some way or another into this type of uh, burning incinerator. So um, everybody had this 55 gallon drum back in, somewhere in the backyard. Most people back then did have acreage, so we had ours setting, I guess, back, um, I don't know how many feet it would be, probably 500 feet from the back of the house. And um, it would just be setting out. I think Daddy had it setting out on top of some bricks. So we would go out there and, you know, just keep dumping the garbage in there and dumping the garbage in there. And um, it would be burned about once a month, just whenever it got filled up. So I remember um, we would be burning the garbage and there would be these explosions. I mean, just boom. It's like our very own little Vesuvius in, in the backyard. And that would be from the um, spray net cans that were powered by fluorocarbons. So, um, I mean, that would, you know, sometimes there would be several explosions because back in the 60s, 50, late 50s and 60s, Y'all know we wore our hair in those big old beehives, and we would just use that spray net like crazy. And, of course, there were three girls, and it was myself and my sister Bobby and my sister Angie and then my mother. I mean, we used spray net like it was going out of style. And spray net back in the 50s, which was made by Helene Curtis Corporation, um, with it being powered by fluorocarbons, I mean, that was a humongous explosion. So you can just imagine how many explosions we would have from those little burn barrels and those cans of spray net. So I was just reminiscing and, th and thinking about that and, um, you know, how interesting it was. And when I was, before I really ever started using spray net and understood what, what it was all about, I reckon I was about five years old, and I remember uh, Mother was had set the barrel on fire, and the fire got out. And y'all, I was terrified of fire. And I think that was because my little baby doll, I had gotten too close to the gas heater one day and got her hair caught on fire. And, um, oh, that just terrified me. And I didn't get another baby doll. That was the only baby doll I got. And its little face got melted and everything. But I still loved her all the same and, and cared for her and tried to uh, repair her little face the best that I could. And so I remember standing in front of 
the back window in the back room of the house and watching that burn barrel explode. And I'm standing there with my little baby doll, you know, keeping it safe and loving on her and everything. And um, the fire got out. And, of course, Dort, she would... Um, her fire extinguisher was her broom. She would go out there with her broom and just start pounding and pounding and pounding and, and fighting the fire and everything. And I think one time we did call the fire department and they came out there with an old pump fire engine and did put the fire out. But I was so terrified of it. I just knew that it was going to come back up through the yard and into the house and either burn the house down or catch my baby doll on fire again. And I just remember standing back there watching Dort out there with her broom beating that fire out. And I was so glad to see those flames die down. I did not want our home burned down and I certainly didn't want my baby doll burned down. So I hope you just enjoyed this little story. It's so much fun to reminisce and bring y'all little stories. and. Please leave me some comments about what you remember about your burn barrel and how did y'all get rid of your trash back in the 50s and 60s. So please give me a thumbs up and y'all share my videos. And y'all, just keep on coming back. Bye guys.